Albert's um, so these are the problems, but uh, Swerger is here, our speaker is here, and we're, we're excited to learn from her in terms of the data science industry. Shane uh, is the senior uh, data scientist of ER, ER and ITVs. Who here has heard of the data science, uh, the word data science? Okay, the corporations right now, what the a lot of corporations what they do is they create data science driven products. A lot of uh, decision makers in corporations, particularly the industry in engineering, for example, they have a specific algorithm that they follow. For example, Sagra, so they follow a specific algorithm for which uh, diversity. Uh, well, I mean, of course, the search engine on search terms, right? They use algorithms there. In principle, for example, they use AI, data science, to know which ads they are writing. For example, they are like a Exa, you know, if you have a company from Exa, you have a target in the sense of Facebook. We have to experience that. We have to look at that. Exa, I know. I experienced that yesterday. I was looking at real estate. And when I click on the Thank you. 
go deeper into NLP, I would like to uh, help you. Uh, I would like to ask you to help me to calculate the piece of creative pages. So, this one. <laughs> So, uh, translation, so yeah, the job is fast. Okay. Okay, so translation, keyword Okay, translation. So it's also the same for uh, similar things. And the last one. So translation. <laughs> okay, so the first, uh, the first two translations were relatively easy, so you can translate it word per word. But the last one is a lot quite. Uh, it is not the easiest for us to translate because the sentence structure is different, and especially for the last example. So, okay, so for this one. So I love how the side of the side itself is a lesson about saving money. So what does this mean? Okay, so so although so in the in the previous slides, um the sense of structure was difficult, that's why it's difficult for us to translate. But for this one, um the sense of structure is a relatively simple, but uh, it's, the meaning can be different. So I love how the design of the site itself is a lesson about saving money. However, it, uh, it can be used to right? So it's uh, in itself, actually. Okay, so for this one, so um, I know it's already used in there in your classes. But uh, there, there's this um, email uh, one. There's a different definition for this email phrase. Yeah. So, <laughs> for everyone who needs email, so it's a name. Can you read? So, so it's, uh, it's what is difficult about language is it's, you can uh, read it. Interpret it at face value, right? So it is the same as a different thing. Okay, so the first one is relating to the sentence structure, the grammar, and this is the syntax. And the other one is. Um, yeah, so this is the syntax so that refers to word order, sentence structure, and grammar. While the other one is uh, this one. So, this um, So, this refers to the um, semantics. Okay? So, uh, it relates to how a word means in the context. Yeah, so sometimes and semantics are important, as you can see. So natural language is any language that has evolved naturally as humans. So natural language is um can be um different language to speak uh, for the different countries and nationalities. So we can count in different languages, so we can count uh, English, want to be professed in 7, 8, and 10. French, uh, un, du, sa, ma, ta, 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 
So therefore, the machine learning strategy is completely data. And since we have like um, available data, data, we can see that there's more data. And then we can include even more data. Oh, okay, so this is the machine learning work as well. So basically, there are two stages in uh, machine learning. So there's a test stage and a training stage. So training stage, so I have an analysis for that. So it's similar to a student preparing for an exam. So, um, so the machine learning model is like the student. And the, the test, the, the training data, so what do you think the training data is? So the training data is your lecture notes, your slides, right? And during the review period or the training stage, you will um, study on that data. So after training, um, you are now ready for a test on your exams, prelims, final. So that's the machine learning work. Okay. However, uh, for most of the applications, um, most of them are uh, for the problem that's asked. Um, we use deep learning. And deep learning is based on the concept of artificial neural network that mimics the way the brain functions. So it draws inspiration from a biological neuron. So the biological neuron is kind of based the nervous system that process that and transmits information to the electrical signals using the transmitters and markets. And this is where the artificial neuron was modeled. So the artificial neuron is set uh, so it looks like uh, it was modeled after the biological neuron. So as you can see, it has an input and the output. And if you look at the output, it's basically just um, multiplication and addition of numbers, right? So if you have inputs x1, x2, and x3, so it's basically um, in, um, these are like your stimulus stimuli, right? And each of the inputs are like weights. So the weights um, determines the, the effect of each of the inputs to the output. And like biological neural networks, you can connect artificial neural networks to form an artificial neural network. So we have the input layer, the output layer, and the hidden layers. Um, Okay, um, so yeah, <clears throat> so. <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, I'm working on a master language housing project. Okay. The other thing that um, I'm working on is test data. However, as you have seen, um, neural networks can only process numbers so we want to be able to transform our test data into numbers. So the next slide, I will be um, showing you how we can process, how, how we usually process So for example, you can actually process this text. What is that? You can actually it. So this is called tokenization. This is the file is in the drawings. So this is called tokenization. So you can actually process this text. So you can already use this token. Processing. However, it doesn't really give any meaning. So, what is the um, assigned to one that is the So, for natural language, there are two areas. So, we have natural language understanding and natural language understanding. So, for natural language understanding, uh, the main goal there is just to understand or to analyze data sets, data, or a document. However, for national language generation, uh, the goal is to generate a language or text. And actually, national language processing is the knowledge of linguistics and artificial intelligence. So the main goal of semantic knowledge generation is to generate two modes of speech and the two um, equal two-way communication between the human and the machine. So um, in almost like all of um, there are a lot of applications involving like um, so ubiquitous computing is a concept that computers are integrated in and part of everyday life and integrated in every single So before we were in a generation where there's one computer, many computers. So there were like the massive mainframe computers and uh, users would usually use share and we computer. And then we got to a point where there were personal computers. So uh, there, that's one computer to one user, and then we're transitioning the way from that. And it's become one computer, like one user, uh, many computers. So that's why uh, one person can own a laptop, a smartphone, and have a smartwatch. And for the different reasons to be there, and we can see the systems, the machines need to interact with humans. We can assume that machines need to understand the human And most of the systems, like uh, the IoT or Internet of Things, they employ some sort of intelligence. So the question is how do we make machines intelligent? So, but before that, um, let me discuss first on uh, natural language generation. This is one of the things that I do at work. So, the biggest pieces for natural language generation would be um, text summarization. So, for example, if you have like, a long document and you just open like, the summary, you can just um, employ text generation. You can also use text generation for language translation. So if you have um, a sentence in one language, you can generate it as uh, another text in another language. 
And you can also use the stored image captioning. So whatever your image is an image and you generate a text caption. Okay, so the definition of artificial intelligence is any system that can perform tasks that require human intelligence. So, for example, x ray in a chat. What if you task performing units? I think we just did a very simple chat, although it can't capture like, all the sentences. Um, by the user, it's still artificial intelligence. So it's one of the earliest forms of the artificial intelligence. Uh, our early attempts that uh, they just uh, kind of asking, or you know, like this is the oldest person of different responses and then keywords that they can respond to. And we can call rules based, which uh, means that they follow it. Rules. And for a very simple um, application, you can actually build an intelligent machine. For example, um, if you want to automate, um, if you want to build a robot and make it a taste robot, it's very easy because the, the, the task is just uh, repeating. So you can set the rules, you can set all the least limits on the rules. It's more complex for other languages and special language. So, as you have seen, um, as I said, like, there are different grammar rules, and uh, apart from that, it's also difficult to know the context and what it uh, or it means uh, and how it fits into the context. So, rules based is basically. So if you know if you know what you want to do the conditions task, then you can like execute the task, right? And as I mentioned for um, simple tasks. However, uh, rules based is not natural. So, from the example on the last slide, um, it was just like doing something like that. So, yeah. Next slide. Okay. Um, I better repeat it this way. So, from the next on the TV slide, So from the previous slide, uh, if you want to make sense of the words, uh, it's not enough to give them like integer tokens, right? So there's an effort to like put meanings or put the words in to context. So it would be great if you can get you can do a vector representation for each word. So, for example, if you assign, if you can assign a vector to Tokyo, Japan, and Philippines, so just imagine if you can do a vector to subtract and addition, you are at uh, twenty one. And if you um, do vector operations on this one square and other, so there. So what this is called word embeddings. So basically, it's using vectors to represent words. And as you can see from the first graph, um, the, position, uh, the position of the vectors in the vector space will give you the context of that word. For, um, for women and pink, so they're uh, situated close by and being opposite to king and the opposite to man. And we 
kind of visualize the entire word vectors? So the, the words that are uh, near to each other uh, mean they were related in some context. So maybe I can introduce you to one of the platforms that I'm using. So it's TensorFlow. So it's basically um, a high center library. And um, you might ask, like, what, what do we need to do to make that in this so, since we have a lot of data, so we use that data, a lot of data, and in order for us to arrive at an output or a desired result, so we represent data into arrays or agencies. And that's why we need your linear algorithm. So, they are represented as many things. Also, uh, we also need um, a statistic because it requires you to a lot of uncertainty. So, we need a statistic of probability. And also, programming. So for the programming language, uh, two programming languages are used for Wi-Fi. So we have R and Python, but I would recommend to just use R. And for this library, TensorFlow is coded in Python. And although you have to know all the math behind uh, the neural networks, right? But uh, there is a library, there are libraries that already have the like, companies. So you can all own, uh, you can just like, import those functions from the library. So this sense is so it's a factor we need to create more celebrated applications involving machine learning and e learning. So we can earn the economies that use So I think that was a little bit there from the company. Um, that's 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 Yeah. Um, so if you want to look, if you want to see the architecture, the neural network architecture for machine translation, so this is it. A lot of them discuss it in much detail. So, for example, we have an input um, that is the and we want to output. Or if you have different lengths, so there you will be a thought that the percent of the transfer is like you summarize the input into one vector so that you can output a different length vector. So that's the architecture of machine translation. And it's similar to another uh, application that I used to do. Oh Actually, um, when I was in my I didn't know that I, I was trying to not put, I was trying to just pop in on the inside, but I only saw that I was to, I don't want to like, give our uh, series. So 
for, for the company, right? Like my partner that I had a team of me, and I work on a data science team, so we have like most of the answers are really data scientists, uh, visualization specialists, right? So we have so in my case, since I'm part of an IT industry and it's really consulting, so um, clients would like, come to us. So some of the clients, they have like the five KPIs already. Okay, and then you have one. Um, like, exact three things. Like there's like banks and there's warehousing. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a PT. But it's a Asian So Right. Um, and for for other clients, they would come to you when you have like, this business problem, and you immediately know what to do. So, okay, you have a problem, or you have this data, so what can you help us? How can you apply it? So sometimes you need to post, and sometimes they already know what they want from us. For example, uh, I have a lot of friends working with friends. Uh, for example, one of them is a business. Thank you. 
Thank you.